Okay. Hi guys, Todd here. Microcoils. I've been avoiding doing this like the plague, uh, but I've been moaned at by a few folk. Sorry, it has been suggested by a few folk that I get my finger out and do a video on this. My knowledge of microcoils is, well, at the bottom of all my YouTube videos it says I'm no expert. Uh, I dabble in a shed and uh, I share my opinion. Uh, go and watch other videos and get a balanced viewpoint and things. I can't stress this enough. I am no expert on microcoils. I am a newbie when it comes to microcoils. So I've been playing for the past few days so I thought I would give a little show and tell. Right, let's see if we can't get up close and personal here. Now this is me on my Valkyrie and I've got a little micro coil going on here. That's 10 wraps uh, going on there and you can see this thing just lights up like a Christmas tree. Now that's 10 wraps of 0 0.30 or 0.3 canthal. Uh, that resistance should take forever to heat up. It should be a really high resistance and it just shouldn't work. Um, my understanding or knowledge of this is very limited and I am I'm guessing here. But I did a thing on, I did a, a tutorial on wire resistance and the thickness and how it works and things like that. And I've also done a quick video on twisted coils, you know, taking two bits of wire and uh, basically halving it and twisting it together. So effectively what you do is with that wire twisted, you're getting half the resistance almost. Well, I'm kind of guessing that microcoils are much the same. Basically what you're doing is just say you take 10 wraps of a really thick gauge wire. Now when you do the 10 wraps, and this is just 10 wraps as an example, let's just say those 10 wraps would normally come out to 3 ohms. When you do a microcoil, you butt all the coils together. Rather than having them spaced out, they're all squeezed in together. And because the coils are touching one another, you are effectively half in the resistance, but you're getting all that coverage, which is good. It means your coils heating up faster and you're vaporizing a lot more juice. That to me is the logic behind it. Whether it's, there's probably somebody somewhere else that can say this so much more eloquently than I ever could. Uh, but that's how I've been approaching it. And, uh, you know, it seems to work quite well. Uh, I've got to admit, I, I'm not a huge, it's good, but I think it works better on, uh, you know, a regulated device, something with a kick in it, or uh, variable wattage or variable power. I, I've just been preferring using it at that. But it will work in a mechanical if you get the resistance down right. But it does seem to take a little bit longer to heat up in a mechanical. Um, get some juice here. I've got my uh, Quax Juice Factory. Goose juice. Just arrived this morning. It is absolutely stunning. It's like a vanilla custard, but a lot of different things going on in it. It's really nice. Uh, and I'm using this in a, a Valkyrie with my Chaplin Drip Tip by Vicious Ant. Uh, make sure I've not locked that like I usually do. It's good. It's nice. 
and I do like vaping with a micro coil. I may go against the you know the latest fashion and trend here, but I still like wrapping the way I've always wrapped, and I still like doing it the way I've always done it. Uh, this just seems to be the fashionable thing just now, and uh, does it give a great? Does it really blow my socks off? Well, so so. <laughs> it, uh, on a variable voltage, variable wattage device, yes. Uh, on a mechanical, I can take it or leave it. flavour just does seem a little bit better though, I'll give it that. Anyway, enough of that. That's my understanding of microcoils. I'll show you how I do it. Uh, now my, the way I do it is based on basically all the videos and what I've read, uh, you know, mostly from uh, Greg, Ninja Vapes did a really good tutorial, uh, uh, Rip Tripper, uh, you know, there's a few videos out there showing you how to do it. Uh, go in the forums and just search for microcoil and you'll find a lot of them. But I'll show you what I've been doing just now. Uh, right, here's my messy worktop. Now, these are the tools that I've been using. Um, blowtorch, or whatever you use to heat your wire normally. Um, you need something to compress your coil in. I've been using uh, my pliers here, needle nose pliers, uh, but you can just use a pair of tweezers if you want. It's entirely up to you. Um, silica wick. I'm using 3mm here. You can use whatever you want. And 0.3mm uh, cantle. That's what I'm using. Uh, what you're going to need is a wrapping implement. You're going to need something to wrap the coil around. And you know, you're going to have to work out, I'm using 0.3 millimetres. I'm going to want something that's going to be, you know, just under 3 mil in diameter uh, to wrap my coil around. Uh, now, I have been using this primarily. Uh, just to give you a heads up. I mean, this is 2.15 mil. The diameter is smaller, it's probably a bit too small for uh, a 3mm wick, but uh, I might have to take a strand off, but I've only got 3mm round here just now, and I can't find another screwdriver that is going to be up to the job. As usual, my half-arsed approach. Um, anyway, we'll use this wee screwdriver. Now, first thing you want to do, get your wire. You want to take off a bit of wire and you want to heat it. When you heat it up, you're going to take all the tension out of it. So that's the first thing you want to do. So there we go. I'm all heated up here. And I've got my screwdriver. And all I do, I've been doing is just pinning the wire like that. You know, give yourself a tail to work with. And I'm going to go for about eight or nine wraps here. That'll do me. It should give me a bit of one point four or five ohm coil, uh, but I'll just wrap away. And I'm just ensuring that I'm pulling it tight and pulling it down to the bottom when I'm doing it. And the key thing is that you want to make sure that you are not, you know, overlapping. You want to keep these coils tight up against one another. So that's four, five, six, seven, Eight. I'll go for nine. Nine. And I want to make sure that the, the coils are coming out and finishing at the same, you know, position. You squeeze that down. Make sure it's tight. And there we go. That's it. That's all I've done. Now you can see there's still some spaces there. But if I take this off like so... I want to make sure my wires are coming out the same way. You see my little coil there. 
Now, I want the coils to be tighter than that. So, what I do is I get my, my needle nose pliers and I just clamp them. And you see the coil like that? Now, all I'm going to do, and I'll try and do this without uh, burning myself to death here. Made sure they were cherry hot, cherry red, hot as I can get them. And I'm just holding them tight, letting it cool, and I'll give it another blast. And I'll just leave that to cool again. And hopefully I should be able to grab this without burning myself. And there we go. There's one micro coil. I'm not lying to you. This is about the sixth coil I've done since I started them. And I've only done six micro coils. Uh, and once you find, there's loads of different ways to do it. Once you find the way that works for you, it is very, very easy. That's it. That's a micro coil. Now I've got my wick here and I'm just going to try and pass this through here. Uh, it probably will take a couple of goes for me to get this because I'm terrible at this. Uh, what I will say is I've been doing thicker ones and actually doubling my 3mm over. If you do it that way, a really handy tip, if you've probably seen this to be perfectly honest, is get an old bit of canthal or nichrome, whatever it is, and pass it through the coils. And if you're using doubled up, you know, just pass that through, you know, your, that through the loop and then just pull it through. And that works really well. Uh, but for this one, I'm just going, you can, I'll stop here, but you can, rather than you having to watch me trying to thread this through here. Just to show you here, there's a bit of, uh, this is 1.5 or 1 mil, and I've just looped it, and I'm just going to pinch the coils together, make sure they don't get separated, and just pull that through like so. And that'll do me for just now. We'll go and get this set up. So that's me back in the Valkyrie again. I've just popped that on. So just uh, pushing the button there, see what we get. There we go. See how it's going from the inside out? That's exactly what you're after. Now, if I let this cool down, you might see what I mean about the ramp up time. I I'm probably doing something wrong, but here we go. Right, pushing the button now. One, two, three, go. It's just a, a, a second for it to start off, but then once you press it again, you know, it's a wee no problem at all. Right. Has me built again. Um, Really, I, I mean, you're using thicker cable, thicker wire, and things to remember. Find yourself a, a winding implement. Um, measure it, get the diameter of it, so that you know whether or not how it's going to work in relation to what you want to pass through it. Now, it works for silica. So, if you've got two mil silica, you want like a two round about a two mil type. Uh, diameter coiling device or screwdriver. Um, the only way it's different is kind of for a Genesis atomizer. If you want to use stainless steel, you're going to want to use basically the drill bit method. Uh, I'll tell you what, Scott, I get your 69 did a review. Was it the H Atty? He does a really nice uh, tutorial on doing it with a Genesis. Basically, watch the drill bit method. The only difference is that you're wanting the coils to be really, really tight together. And you put the coils in place, 
and then you do the, you know, you roll your mesh to suit the size of the hole and you pass it through. Uh, off on a tangent as usual. You know, don't worry about when you're wrapping it on here, don't worry if it's not, you know, if there's big spaces and whatnot. Get it as tight as you can. Don't let the coils overlap one another. Uh, and then get a pair of tweezers or whatever you have, compress it, heat it up, let it cool down, heat it up and let it cool down. Pop it on with your wick passed through and you're away. Um, let's say your resistance is going to depend a great deal on the gauge of wire you use and the dimension of the diameter of your wrapping implement. Um, go for it. Try it out. Uh, I mean, I can't stress, I am a total newbie at this. I mean, that today is my first real day at having a good proper crack at it and I've recorded it whilst doing it and it's turned out not too bad. Um, the vape is nice, there's no denying it. Um, wow, yes it is, it's very nice. Um, and that's me and microcoils. Um, as always, if you're using mechanicals, remember, uh, check your resistances, uh, make sure your battery can handle it, uh, use safer chemistry or protected batteries if you're going sub-ohm and that kind of thing. Um, I, just to stress one last time, this is not a this is how you do it video because I am a newbie at it myself. Go and watch the guys that have been doing this for a long time. The only reason for me recording this was just to show that, you know, if I, if I can do it, then basically anybody can do it because you should see my desktop here. What a mess. I've got bits everywhere. But blowtorch, screwdriver, some wire, and you're away. Trust me, it's easy. <laughs> we'll catch you later. And to all of you that have been getting on at me to do this, I hope you're happy now. See you later. Bye.